and as they get situated, uh, I see many of our residents have signed in, so I'll be calling you off of the list for those who had uh, some questions. But this is an open forum, and this gives us an opportunity to talk about some of the uh, improvements, but also to talk about some of the questions that have been asked, some of the issues that have gone over. And, and one of the questions I have, uh, Gary, Mr. Higgins, uh, is we talk about the average of $7, right? less than $7 per month for the average home. And the average home is assessed, as you pointed out, at around $240,000. That's not fair market value. That's your assessed value for purposes of taxation. A home assessed at 240000 may sell for over $300,000 and change, but that's your assessed value. And one of the items, and I know, Gary, you know this, but 51% of taxes overall in the community are raised from residential properties, and 49% come from the industrial properties. That's simple math, but if you can explain uh, to the crowd, what, what does that mean in terms of the taxation? And, and who's going to be paying what? The tax levy for the school district on the debt service component, uh, when we quote an average home, the voters are typically the individuals living in the homes. Uh, the other 49% of your assessed value, they don't get a free ride uh, because we're not quoting that. If you had a building assessed at a million dollars or a factory assessed at $10 million, they're going to pay their fair share, all right? So they don't get off on this just because you're a homeowner. We're only quoting that $240,000 because that's what an average home is. If you could sell your house to the mayor says for $300,000, you're not paying $34 on each one of those $100,000. You're only paying it on what's in the tax duplicate in the tax assessor's office. Uh, those buildings, those factories, they're going to pay their fair share. Um, so they're not going to get any benefit uh, out of these uh, improvements in the new school, but they will pay their fair share. So the residents will pay 51% because that's what they make up of the tax base, but Amazon, Goldman Sachs, Kinder Morgan, ShopRite, the rest of the businesses will be paying 49% of the new construction. Okay. Uh, our first question for a sign-in is uh, Tina Vallejos. Tina? Uh, John's going to bring you a microphone. I wanted to know what new technologies will be implemented in the schools, whether it be the existing one and the proposed one. Well, we would continue to grow uh, what we have. Let's say our Chrome one-to-one -one device, uh, the way we're applying it now with the sixth grade and the ninth grade, that's an endeavor that we expect to continue in the district. Um, but the science, the science labs also uh, come with you know, state-of-the-art equipment that our kids are going to be able to utilize in the classroom. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> and also, I want to mention the uh, the auditorium also will have the best in sound and lighting that there is. If you visit some of these larger high schools, um, they have the best equipment that there is out there, and so that would be part of it as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Nick Rotunda didn't speak as of yet today, but Nick spoke at the last meeting, and of course he's the project engineer on this. Nick, uh, there were some questions relative to the location uh, in front of the high school, uh, and first and foremost I'll throw out to the board, uh, is this, or to the panel, is this the best location for a school? Can it not be built somewhere else uh, in the community? And I'll start with you, Rose, and then we can go around the, the board. Um, I think it was definitely the most cost efficient for us here in the district. Uh, it was land that we already owned. There wasn't anything that we needed to purchase. There wasn't anything that we needed to knock down. Um, and we can get the, the process going a lot smoother and a lot faster. Nick, you've been familiar uh, as a city engineer for some time uh, with TNM, and you've been familiar with uh, the property in town. Uh, somebody said, why can't we put this on, on the DuPont property along the waterfront? Why can't we simply build it uh, along there? So, and, and talk for a moment, if you will, about the issues on the DuPont property. Sure. DuPont specifically is a contaminated site. That's number one. They are required to do some work to cap it. That does not make it uncontaminated. It's not an ideal location. Also, it's not an ideal for location because it's not in the middle of the district. In fact, though, their deed restriction in the DEP will prohibit residential growth or school construction on a chemical site. That's correct. They won't allow that. 
Even though it's capped, even though it's protected, that's not something that they want to use. The brownfield is specifically for other type of use. It's usually not public use. Sometimes it's a park, but those parks are then capped. But it can't be for something that's a public use like this. But to answer your other question concerning location-wise, this is an ideal location. Um, superintendent just pointed out that if it was not a property owned by the borough, it would take a much longer time between purchasing it and the survey and the transaction. There was a question in the last meeting, and certainly uh, online, I've had this question that I've asked uh, during this process, but uh, how are we handling some of the additional parking uh, in the area? Now, the city has acquired and has put additional parking in the park, which many of the teachers use, and that's freed up parking around the high school. But specifically on Lewis Street and on Washington Avenue, how are you handling additional parking for this building? So they've investigated purchasing an additional lot, which is directly adjacent to the parking lot of the high school. And we looked at how the parking lot of the high school is configured. It can be reconfigured to gain a few more parking spaces, which will be done as part of this. And we can add those additional spaces, plus the new ones on the lot that's directly adjacent, which means we're going to be adding, while we're adding more uh, staff, we're also adding more parking to supplement it and reconfiguring the ones. So you're picking up 25 classrooms. You roughly have 20 to 30, 25 to 30 teachers in the building. The new lot, which more than just investigate, the board's voted to condemn the property. So for anybody who lives on Lewis Street, uh, this is the home that clearly looks like it should be torn down, uh, that we've had issues with on property maintenance for some time. It's an absolute shithole. And uh, see the benefit of being a moderator is I can say that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's right next to the rear parking lot of the high school. And so that property the board is condemning to knock down to, to tie into their additional parking and to pick up additional parking spaces of, of roughly 20 to 30. Right? Now, with regard to the uh, stormwater issue, uh, as you know, Washington Avenue is a low-lying area. What considerations has the team made in raising the building and handling stormwater capacity and, and storage? So that existing corner, which is a little bit lower than the floor of the elevation of the high school, the high school's about 11 or 12 elevation, the intersection somewhere about six or seven. You can't see with your eye, but if you stand at the intersection, the building's a little higher. That does flood. But uh, because of Carteret's low-lying area and the tidal influence, um, when the tide gates close, the water can't get out to that area, stops in that location. We're providing stormwater for that. We've actually met with the NJDEP and they've approved our concept. So we put this new building in, the area that's currently going to be collecting water will hold that underneath the building. One of the questions was asked, how do we do that? It's actually an open building underneath. We're going to fill in that area by taking some of the soil out and holding it. While we hold it, we wait until the tide dissipates and then we discharge it. So basically, we're going to be improving the stormwater opportunities from the building itself. So it operates, uh, is this the right analogy? Does it operate like a retention pond? Absolutely. Okay. So someone at the last meeting used the term pool, which I happen to agree with, but I understand from an engineering perspective, you're not going to use that term, but you're holding several feet of water under the building, which otherwise would be on the street. That's correct. We're holding it there, we're detaining it, which means we have a small little opening, we're letting it out at a rate that's less than the current rate. So right now, if it rains, it's going to fill a certain amount. When we're done, it'll be less. So based upon DEP regulations, this new building, which will be elevated, which will have a stormwater detention system underneath the building, can't adversely impact the water on the street. You're putting less water on the street than you would be if it was simply a grass area. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, that's a state requirement. I'll add one other thing. Um, we actually met with the borough engineer, and I spoke to your office and administration about other opportunities to provide some additional stormwater, which hasn't been designed yet, but I found at least four or five areas that could become operational and add to collecting the water doing the exact same thing and improving the intersection. So unrelated to the school project, because it's not under their, under their authority, uh, the city has engaged TNM to take a look at stormwater management and control in the area we've looked at or are looking at. Uh, upgrading the stormwater lines, uh, perhaps putting additional storage pipes underground, increasing the capacity of those lines uh, at the park on Lewis Street, on Washington Avenue, and even perhaps in between the two uh, school buildings. Correct. And that would just be for added capacity. All right, our next question from the public that's signed in, uh, Kieran Deep Sidhu. Good evening, everybody. Um, I basically think people really, really need to ask themselves a simple question. 
will this solve the building problem? You are still not decreasing student numbers. You are not adding to the new classes to curriculum. I know in the last meeting I mentioned um, life classes, you know, and Dr. Jones, you mentioned that you guys are looking into a shop class, you know, for it to sixth grade. But um, I feel like, you know, it shouldn't just be a sixth grade option, it shouldn't be an after school option. You really need to think about the students that really are not at the academic level. Um, in addition to that, um, it would be great if we could just showcase a new high school, for example, if you a brand new high school. I understand the desire maybe for um, students, you know, at the lower level um, to find out in space, spaces. But it's just it's disappointing when you go to high school and it just looks old and really like torn up. I mean, I know um, the president mentioned, you know, we don't want to keep continuing with patch ups, and I get that, but at the end of the day, I really think um, we should get a brand new high school. So that's just my opinion. Um, in addition to that, I know the gentleman mentioned, I guess, Higgins, is it? Mr. Higgins, Mr. Higgins yeah. mentioned um, the taxes, you know, uh, what it's the exactly the tax off the interest of for the homeowners. But the 40% that we mentioned the last meeting that we're expecting from the state, that's not guaranteed. That's guaranteed. We have that in writing? We have that in writing. Okay. But will that be referenced on the school website? It should be. But what we can do is put up the two. What we can do is we can put the two letters up if they aren't up already. I'd recommend that we put the two letters up from the Department of Education certifying the funds towards the project. And that's about seven and a half, eight million dollars that's guaranteed for this in terms of debt service. They don't write a check, they pay their share of debt service. This is what's expected. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The final building material on the front may change, but the footprint and the construction is the same. Yes. In the pictures, right? Yes. In the pictures. Yeah. If I could uh, follow up on Perth Amway, I believe there's 31 whole school reform districts in the state of New Jersey. They were formerly known as Abbott districts. Perth Amway is one of those districts, and their new high school will be paid by all of us. Uh, the state of New Jersey will pay 100%. So those taxpayers, yeah, the taxpayers in first standpoint are paying nothing. They could never even afford a new high school like that. But us as residents of New Jersey are all contributing to that new high school. So that's where that high school is coming from, not the taxpayers. And as Rose, as you were mentioning, that school costs how much? $250 million. And that's because so they- So I just want to mention, right, that in order to build a high school, you're not talking 37 million. What's required of high school is going to be at least three times more than that amount. And we didn't think that that would be reasonable to go out to the voters and do, especially when that's not the need in the district right now. But are there any capacity issues currently in the high school? Is the high school over capacity? No, and so that's what I'm saying. The need is obviously not there. That it's not an overcrowded building, okay. no. Our next question is from Susan Naples. Susan? I know there are several hats in the community, and this was touched on a bit. Um, but I have one question, one statement, and one suggestion. As a resident of Blue Street, for you better get that all in under two minutes and forty seconds. As, as a resident of Blue Street for thirty-seven years, Blue Street has flooded on many, many occasions. My question is: Do you anticipate any additional flooding due to the building of the school? No. No. The answer is no. no. Uh, and to, Lloyd mentioned that, but uh, as Nick touched on earlier, uh, the new projects can't add any additional flood water into the streets. So it has to store all of the water on site that would have been generated on site. So it actually reduces the amount of water going into the street. It doesn't solve any problems that may already exist on the street, but it doesn't make it worse. It actually reduces it. That, that was my question. Um, Next, just um, being my statement, um, I applaud the administration and the Board of Education for the way they've structured the schools as it has to do with grade levels, pre-K four, five, six, seven, eight in the high school. As an educator and a parent, I believe it fosters a much healthier environment for all of our students, their emotional health, especially at that sixth grade level, because I lived it with my child when the middle school opened. Uh, 11 years old, a little bit young to go into that environment, to go from playing pretty pretty princess to, to getting ready for high school in a day. So I applaud you for that. And the research shows that um, sixth graders actually do much better when they're with their younger peers. 
Uh, and my suggestion, last time, last thing, um, not asking for an answer, but just please keep in mind to alleviate uh, some traffic and pedestrian congestion between the current middle school, the high school, and um, if approved, the junior high school. If you could possibly consider um, maybe having students enter the high school through that gymnasium area on Herman Avenue, the, the uh, junior high school students, I'm sure, will be entering in their main door there. And then perhaps with buses and things like that for the 5 6 school, maybe having some of them go to Carter Avenue. This way you have three streets absorbing all of that traffic. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll certainly uh, be working with the board on that relative to transportation issues. Uh, Helen M. Helen? <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Tavon Horsaya. Um, I am a mother of five children in Claret and I'm also a homeowner. And I want to ask you, what does $81 mean to you a year? Um, to me, it really doesn't mean anything because I spend a lot more on hair dye, on more on So anything as a community, we have to, it's our responsibility to support any project that will benefit our students. Um, because so these are tomorrow's future leaders, and we want to have, we want to, we want them to feel like when they talk about Carter and what school they go to, we want them to have pride in what school they go to and about their town. Because right now it's like, oh, okay. But it, I know she, she mentioned about building a high school, um, and I can guarantee you, years ago this probably wasn't in, you know, in projects, but this is a step into the right direction. So maybe in the future we can, you know, Thank you. I know uh, Commander Lasicki is here, and he led, led us in the pledge. And he mentioned to me earlier, and the commander is a veteran of the Vietnam War. War. Give him a round of applause. And uh, of course, uh, the commander, as a, as a veteran, and he you know married a, a senior citizen. And what, what he said to me. He said, Mayor, he says, you know, I'm a veteran and my wife's a senior and George will be there one day. He said, but we have a responsibility to, to help the next generation. And so, Commander, I applaud you and even Gloria for your support of the, uh, of the question. Thank you. Marilyn Muscow. Marilyn? Thank you. Um, I live on the street, so I'm concerned about this junior high school. Firstly, schools are very close together. If there is a fire, God forbid, where are they going to go? The building is designed, and I'll ask Lloyd to mention that, uh, but it's designed where the buildings are at least 20 feet apart, uh, wrapping around. There is a courtyard in between those buildings, so for purposes well, of fire case, agent, when you would evacuate both schools, right? You would have to, sure. And where would yeah. you put? Well, they have a, a plan for evacuation, and I'd ask the architect and the super to touch on that. Yeah, well, all, these, all the schools have appropriate stairs that lead out to the street, sidewalk to the street, so that the adequate exits from each of the schools to the outside. So that's part of the plan that would be uh, developed as uh, evacuation methods. And what about student safety and residents when the construction is going on? Because this is going to take time. I understand you want to do a lot of this in the summer when they're not there. But I mean, you have to like look at the Performing Arts Center. I mean, it's a lot of construction going on and you're going to have a lot of yeah. With, with the art center, we have the ability of closing down the street. We don't have the ability of doing that here. So they have to work within the confines of the area in front of the school. So that'll have to be. The building would be built possibly a year and a half of construction. Uh, it would, um, obviously, any construction site has people working on it, deliveries of material and services. But it would be done orderly, it would be done manageably, and it would be secured from. Students, pedestrians, uh, uh, cars, traffic. So, like any other construction site, it would be secure and orderly, and it would be built in accordance with all regulations. And again, about the flooding. So far this summer, I've had waterfront property and I've had oceanfront property because we flood from the park and from the street. God forbid, there's a flood during the day and you've got hundreds of children. There's nowhere to go, and there's nowhere to get. 
Well, you know, I, this pool underneath the building sounds like a great idea. Come to my house when it rains, or come to Sue's house, because Sue lives there too. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Now, the building, I understand they're going to have a retention pond, but how much water is it going to hold? Nick? Good question. It holds approximately 16,000 cubic yards of, of stormwater. That equates to the amount that hits the roof. But to answer your question, um, while storms hit quickly, we usually have some pretty good impact time. Um, number one, the weather service is much better now, where we get an idea about when the storms are coming. So if there is an opportunity for a storm, and, and you've seen this recently in Hurricane Dorian, um, Dorian, sorry, right? uh, where it came up, we knew about it days ahead of time. Those are not the storms that are causing the problem. The storms that are causing the problem are the ones that are hitting and have a quick amount of rain that comes through. When those do hit, it's normally not a flood condition for an hour, or two hours, three hours before. That gives more than enough time for a school to react. So to answer your question, could it, could it come quickly? Yes. And can you react? Yes. The amount that we're storing is actually over the amount that's there, so it's going to improve the situation. Okay. I would also want to point out, and your time's up, but I, I do want to point out that most of our schools serve as disaster recovery areas if there's an incident in the town. So many of the schools have generators. It's part of the, the district's long-term plan to have generators. The building is four foot above the elevation of the current uh, uh, area, above the grass. So the building it will be the, one of the safest and most secure building uh, buildings in town, and it will be out of the you will be fine. <laughs> yes. All right. Josephine Wilson. Josephine Wilson. Hi, I'm Josephine Wilson. I'm a proud it for 20 plus years in Carteret. I started at Columbus School when it was a KB district and was part of the renovation when it became a K to 5. I was then transferred to Nathan Hale when it reopened and I was part of that. Through both the processes, um, it was pain, but the pain added to everything we had. Um, the elementary schools now are in good shape. Yes, there's no repairs, but as Mrs. Diaz says, uh, said, we have starter programs. The one school we haven't been able to change was the middle school. We have the staff and we have an award-winning chorus. We have a band that is bigger than ever. Um, the board graciously is able to give us money for instruments, but what we don't have is the space. We have a chorus teacher who happens to be here tonight that is sharing your room so you can only have chorus when there's not band. Last year he had to split his, uh, his classes with the art class. When our students are moving to the high school, our visual and performing arts have become one of the strongest departments in the school. Year after year we have students receiving scholarships, national um, awards, if we're going to continue this, we need to give the opportunity for our visual and our performing art teachers to grow their programs even further. It's amazing what they've done, but we can't change the space. We don't have any more rooms. As I said, the staff is there, the materials are there. What we don't have is a chorus room, a band room. So, I am 100% in support of the new 70 building, and I thank the board and the uh, su uh, superintendent and assistant superintendent and the mayor for supporting this. And I really hope that the parents realize how important this program, these programs are, and you vote yes. Thank you. Uh, before we go on to our, our next question, uh, a point that I want to make, and then I'll throw it out there for a panel discussion, has to do with uh, state aid. Uh, this year we received approximately $29 million in total state aid. If you go back uh, to Governor Corzine's last year, he increased state aid that year by $4 million. The following year, 2010, Governor Christie cut state aid by $4 million. My point with that is when that school funding formula was put in place in 2009 and Governor Corzine came to Carteret, New Jersey, in the middle school to sign that law, it said that Carteret was underfunded. The state was screwing Carteret by $16.9 million per year. 
It was supposed to receive four million in 2009, eight million in 2010, 12 million, and then 16 million. One administration later, not only did we not get the 16 million, we were four million less. Over the past two years, Governor Murphy has increased state aid to schools by $500 million. Carter has been the beneficiary of about $3.5 million in total to that. According to the funding formula, if nothing else changes, it's less than $7. But the funding formula says next year we should be entitled to an additional $3 million, and the following year an additional $3 million, until we reach that $16 million. If, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Superintendent and, and, and um, Mr. Higgins, if we do receive additional state aid next year, as the formula says, will there even be a need for an increase in taxation? We're saying $7 is the worst case scenario, $7 a month. But in fact, if we get additional money, it may be considerably less than that or zero. Yeah, I know you've never seen a dollar you don't want to spend. I get that. <laughs> I think yeah, we have two buckets here. We have the debt service levy and we have the general levy uh, to cover really the operations of the district. We know that debt service levy will go up based upon the scenario provided, the $81. If you get significant state aid into your current expense budget and the budget doesn't go up by more than that, that reduction as a result of the state aid exceeding the increases would offset that $81. Tax relief. Right. It would be. I mean, in essence, this year with the additional money, the board was able to reduce their tax levy by $500,000. So the board had a $500,000 tax cut this year. All right. All right. We have a question from a Mr. Hardell Singh. Hardell? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Hardell Singh Jawal. I'm five decades resident of Cartwright. And I've seen quite a bit so far as the education goes and the management in town. Well, in town presently, if you look at, I'm going to give a statement less than three minutes. We are not going for that. <laughs> <laughs> it will be less. At the end, I will ask a question, but I have to do the statement. See, in town presently, many bids are spending thousands and thousands of dollars sending the children to the private schools. It is not in the United States, same things in India, where I have personally adopted one public school to be in care competitive with a private school. Do you do you want to adopt a public school here, Hardell? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> but my question, a couple million dollars and we can name the building after you, just see. <laughs> not a criteria here. The criteria is the education, the quality, the future of this country. If we have got a better education, believe me, most of the problems will be able to be But in quarterly I'm so happy today that the management and the board and the, the, uh, the education, everybody is looking towards to improve the education standard. My children graduated only up to eight or eight grade years, then I sent to private school. And of course, from my doctor, the whatever. Best education, that's the best investment of any parents in life. I wonder that. Well, the thing again is this the main factor to have a better education is a classroom size. Because the teacher can put more attention to the children to attend to individual needs and what they really want for what their weak points are with way they have to get the standard up. Because there are supposing there are 50 students. If the teacher cannot concentrate on it, if there is 20 or less, it's a lot better. So my question is, because only I can reflect, that this program, how it is going to affect the size of the classroom in the middle school, in the junior high school, and in the high school to have our main objective accomplished. But so far as the burden on the, on the parents, on the homeowners, Concern. It is absolutely nothing. Seven dollars per house, or even twenty dollars per month, is absolutely negligible if your kids can get better education. Thank you. Thank you. That question to the superintendent. 
So yes, I would agree with you, right? If we want to improve our community, our town, we have to make sure that we're providing our students with the best education possible. Um, and yes, it does help when you have a smaller classroom size. And so with reconfiguring the schools, right, by it, let's just give an example. The elementary schools, we would be removing the fifth grade from the elementary schools. So one school in particular has five fifth grade classrooms. We would take those fifth grade students and house them over at Carteret Middle School. We now have five additional classrooms at the elementary where I can now create additional classrooms for our students. That's where the space comes in. That middle school now would have seventh and eighth grade students that would be leaving that building into a new space that's being created, that state-of-the-art uh, junior high that we talked about. So now Carteret Middle School would only house fifth and sixth grade students. But how are we going to affect the high school so the classrooms, there really isn't overcrowding at the high school level. I do want to mention that. Our classrooms uh, size at the high school level is generally, you know, 20, 22, um, depending on the courses. Some electives might be very popular, those get full, but scheduling is done a little differently at the high school level. But as a matter of space, we do have plenty of space in the high school. That's, that's not an area of concern. Middle school is where we're really having an issue, and the elementaries. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tupelo Melvin. Uh, my question would be, with the new schooling, how would you be able to provide security so that the children that are in the junior high wouldn't be able to get into the high school? And then the other question is, would there be a uniform policy that would be separate for those students inside the junior high so that they can be spotted easily should they integrate with the high school? Two parts to the question. So the building will be secured uh, both at the entrances from the outside as well as the entrance that connects the building to the high school. So in the high school, we are going to connect the second floor corridor through an existing room, which is going to be converted into part of the corridor that connects into the new junior high school. And there will be a security measure there. So there'll be somebody stationed there, there'll be security cameras, there'll be um, special doors that lock and prevent high school students from going into the junior high school or prevent junior high school students going into high school. So that would be a lockable, secure uh, place that either place couldn't go to the other without having permission. As far as the front door goes, that would be secured as well. Someone could not get into the building without being announced and being escorted into the building. So those would be secured. As far as the uniform, I don't know if you that. Okay. We clearly haven't gotten that far, right? We can't just make any decisions like that until we know about what happened September 24th. Um, but I would imagine that they would have to have some type of uniform that distinguishes them from the high school students as well. Thank you. That concludes those who have signed in. If there's anyone who would like to address uh, our panel, please raise your hand and John will give you the microphone. Are there any other questions from someone who has yet to ask a question? Just state your name for the record, sir. Um, just uh, solar or is it going to go question has to do about the any solar technology or well we do incorporate solar technology where it's warranted and where it's economical uh, solar technology has to be proven in these schools to be economical for the investment so that would be looked at as far as what the investment of the cost is versus what the payback would be so it's allowed but it's not currently called for it's not currently called for the aspect value has decreased over the years so the solar benefit to public entities are questionable and we look at that at the time that it would be designed but will the roof be um if the roof, roof is designed be supported okay. and be able to be ad adapted for for any future solar or any other technology that could come up and we do um, as an architect we do design our buildings to the most energy efficient uh, um, criteria we have many lead certified buildings so the buildings itself are very, very, very economical to operate. Okay. 
Thank you. Any other questions? My question was, you said it was a 600 student for the junior high? Yes. So, as we grow our town and the capacity gets larger, where does the rest of the kids go if we go past the 600? The board had a demographic study done for their projected population. So at the moment, we can't really predict too far in, in the future, but there is capacity in the buildings. Uh, if the district grows tremendously, at some point 10 years from now, that would be addressed in that. I, I always love the technical answers you get from the experts, but let me say this. Uh, there are 25 classrooms, right? 25 class, 25 homerooms. But your science lab, your music room, your choir room, your dance room, those are not counted as homerooms. So there are additional classrooms there that if you had to have a homeroom, like when I was in the high school, science lab was a homeroom. Those science labs uh, in, these, in this building aren't designed to be homerooms at the moment. They could always be homerooms, the choir, the music, the band room, they could be a homeroom in the future if that capacity grew. If I may add, currently, if you have any students at Carteret Middle School, every room in that building is used as a home room. This would not be the case with that high school, and that's what the mayor is stressing. They actually have a home room to sit in, but then there's these beautiful additional spaces that can be used. For purposes of the plan, uh, Lloyd had to send very specific, using very specific data that the state requires to say this is how many students are going to go in there, but that can grow. So, any other questions? The young lady in the back? Hi. Sit hard, Dal. <laughs> now, your your husband is shaking his head. Yes, she doesn't need a mic. <laughs> My question is still based on the traffic um, problems that we have on Lewis Street. Now we have the middle school, seventh and eighth, and high school. Is it safe to assume that you are going to? Um, do different time things when classes start, because that will also touch base on what this young lady said about how to keep the high school in the seventh and eighth grade separate. I mean, we're talking lots of kids on Lewis Street and a lot, a lot of traffic, buses. God forbid it rains, I can't get out of my driveway. Honest to God, it's God's honest truth. It takes me at least 40 minutes to get out of my driveway in the morning I'm right across from the teacher's parking lot on Lewis Street. The park is behind me. I sit there. I don't think we mentioned the, uh, the time schedule. Yeah. But the superintendent? We can definitely assure you that uh, staggered entrance and dismissal times are absolutely part of the plan. And also logistically placing those entrances and exits for the students. So all of that absolutely is being considered and looked at. Is there anyone who has not asked a question that would like to answer, ask a question? No. Mr. Hardell. Well, the only thing at the end is I want to request and appeal everybody that on 24th of September, please put vote yes. So this project and all the little work we can achieve and make a difference that should be part of it. And we can say we are proud to be a carpet president. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hardell. On behalf of our panel, I'd like to thank you for joining us here this evening. Uh, you saw the presentation. Now it's up to you as the voters of our community, as the taxpayers of our community, uh, to make it this determination to make this decision. When it comes to city projects, it's up to the mayor and council. The vote doesn't go to the public. You have elected representatives for that. Because it's a Board of Education project, and because they're looking to borrow approximately $37 million, only the voters of the district uh, can approve that. So we look forward to uh, support for this question and to getting in the ground on the school. Thank you for everyone for attending.